Welcome to Guys Talk Knives. I'm Andy. That's I'm Jason. J- and the elephant in the room is Robbie Bowman. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that called you an elephant straight off. That's, that's not good, right? We, I mean, we've got a third person this week. It's kind it, of fun. It is kind of fun. Is our first guest? It, well, no. Not, well, we had Tyler. Tyler doesn't count, right? Well, we had the SE guys. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we had Shane. We, who, how could we leave out this Shane? This is our first local guest. That's right. And if you don't know who this is, this is Robbie Bowman. He's a blacksmith. He's been on Forged and Fire, what, twice? Been on there twice. Twice. Season three. There's also season four of the fan favorite. Nice. And that's we awesome. heard that you actually got uh, more fan uh, votes than anybody on that fan favorites episode. Yeah, they were kind of floored that I had a, as many votes. As I did, and they wondered why. And I said, "Well, I'm in a shop in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. <laughs> you know, that has over a thousand people a day come through my shop. You, you kind of stacked the deck a little bit, didn't you? <laughs> hey, we try to do the exact same thing in this building, That's right? You sure know? Right. So, no, it's great. I'm glad you're here. We want to talk about some cool things that are going on with you, and just ask some general questions. But before we get into all of that, I want to ask just you in general. I know you are a blacksmith. I know you've been on this show making knives, and they kind of prescribe what you want, what they want you to make on forged and fire isn't that right right we can make a signature knife but it's what they give us to make knife out of okay is what's tough okay so here's my question for you what kind of knives do you like personally you know i like a small little hunter or skinner you know i've always wanted to make a custom knife that the everyday man can afford and carry and be proud of okay okay so yeah you wouldn't find yourself on the modern side of things at all. You want to go more that traditional route, that nice more traditional, uh, down to earth type guys. You know, type knives. Nice. Guys are using them to hunt, to hike, to camp, fish, whatever. Right here in the Smoky Mountains, you got a lot of backpackers and campers oh, yeah. and survivalists, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. you got to have something they can use. Awesome, awesome. You know, we carry a couple of things in the store that you put out. Uh, these, of course, are the uh, railroad spike knives. Talk about what goes into making this kind of thing. Well, first off, on my railroad spike knives, I do buy them brand new, and I can order these with a higher carbon content than an actual spike. That way, they do make you better knives. Nice. And they've been making knives out of railroad spikes, I guess, since they started having railroads. Right. We hammer out the entire blade. You know, we put the twist in it, mm-hmm. and then we do a, a heat treat on it to get a good rock well, so right. it makes an excellent, excellent knife. We can't keep those in the store. We cannot keep them. In fact, the two that I have sitting here right now are the last two that I've got to go. And we had to dig around to see if we could find those and pull those out of the case just so we could bring them up. Yeah, yeah, I've got some on order. Yeah, we do. He's going through the checklist in the back. Got to remember Mm -hmm. Smoky Mountain Life Works. But you have some history with us here, right? I mean, you worked out in the building that is in our parking lot. Yes, me personally, you know, I grew up, my grandpa was an actual blacksmith. Uh-huh. My daddy was an iron worker and a welder. Mm-hmm. So we'd been manipulating metal my whole life. Sure. But then I had a serious hunting accident one time, mm-hmm. and my therapy was went back to my roots, and I started bladesmithing and blacksmithing. And then I come here to Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and y'all had a little shop out here. Right. And I started uh, making knives out there with the fan for the customers and letting awesome. them make knives while they're here. Right, you know, it's, right. it's their souvenir that they help make oh, right awesome. here in the Smoky Mountains. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, how did you get from there up to where the old mill is and your whole shop and all that stuff? How did that happen? You know, the cool thing about being here is everybody that come in this parking lot was looking at was knives. It was knives, nothing but knives. Right. But I outgrew the building pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I had an opportunity up near the old mill district with a bigger place mm-hmm. where I can really take care of the customers and, uh, you know, have the space to do it with. Right. So tell me about that space. Tell me what it's like uh, and, and tell me what all you do there. Up there at Iron Mountain Metalcraft. Take that back. We, uh, <laughs> we want anybody. In case Robbie stabs <laughs> me in the middle of the show. I know, no, no blood today. I've, I've thought about it before, Robbie, so if you need to, go for it. No, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but no, up there at my shop, you know, I want to give anybody who comes to this town an opportunity to forge either right. a knife or an ornamental piece. You know, we got different things they can uh, make. They can make knives or they can make some ornamental stuff. But no matter what you make, you're in and out of my shop in less than an hour. Nice. I have things that four-year-old kids can make. Nice. You know, so it's all family-oriented, the women, the husbands, the kids. Everybody can come in and make 
a hand forged product with me. So are you literally so you're forward. literally firing the steel in the forge and hammering it out right there with with people who are in town just for fun vacation. Yeah, and my shop is open where y'all can hang out. It's real customer friendly. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you can hang out and watch us create and take this metal right. and manipulate it and make things. So it's like build a bear for rednecks, right? Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Not even for that. It, it's build a bear for people like me who are like, oh. I would love to oh. learn how to blacksmith. Mm-hmm. And I've thought a billion times about putting a, a, a forge in because you look it up okay. online, you're like, oh, I could do that. I'm, I'm wrong. I know I can't. I would have to learn from somebody. So it would be amazing to come by and actually to be able to have somebody right. teach you because it's hard to find that type of a, apprenticeship master relationship anymore where you have somebody who can teach you how to do it. It is. There ain't a lot of places where people have this opportunity. Oh, for sure. But here in the Smoky Mountains, that's a big opportunity to take because I get people all day long who want to get into this again. Right. It's gaining so much popularity. Yeah. But they don't know where to go, or where they can learn it at. Right. But it's tough to find. Yep. Yep. Right. And you've, and you, <laughs> I keep seeing on the internet people trying to build forges in their, <laughs> I watched a guy try to do it in a bathtub in his house, <laughs> not realizing I, that his bathtub is not made of something that will hold fire. <laughs> I have priced out the stuff. I know exactly what I have to buy. I've even got, looked at the cheap route of taking like the, the brake drum off of a car and mm-hmm. making a forge out of that. Right. And in the back of my head, I'm just like, I'm going to burn something down. I need to move that away from the house when I do this. I'm going to start a small fire. This is going to be bad. Be, you know, be extremely careful. That's like being in the city limits here in the Smoky Mountains. Yeah. You know, we couldn't go with homemade. Right. No, yeah, of course. Yeah, it has to be factory built. You got to know right. specifics. And you got to have safety in mind. Well, especially having people who've never done it in there with you. That has to be right. concerning, to say the least. But, I mean, I have stood outside your shop and literally just drooled watching <laughs> It has been wild to watch, especially the expressions on the, the kids and the young people's faces who are just wide-eyed watching you work, and, and it's getting, you know, sparking something in them. You know, I've been doing it here 12, 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this for a long time. I've watched kids grow up right. coming to Smoky Mountains and making something every year. Did have a family thank me that it helped their kid. That's awesome get into wanting to manipulate metal and forge right. and, and he's actually got his own wood stove nice. business. <laughs> That's awesome. That's had his great. own wood stove business when he was in high school. How so cool. Let's talk about those city limits for a while because I know when you went on the fan favorite episode you talked about the wildfires that happened and I want to reassure people and everybody here that all of Gallenberg and all of Pigeon Forge did not burn to the ground and exactly. is gone, yeah. right? We're all right, still here, right? right? It's all yeah. good. It was it was it was a devastating thing, and it was a tragic thing, yes. but it did not kill off what was here, right? No, no. The, all the magic of the Great Smoky Mountains is still here. We're, we are all still here to give you a good time. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. And the best thing you can do is come back. Right. Yeah, yeah, people always want to know what they can do to help right after the fires happen, yep. and I was always like, no, come <clears throat> come visit. Just come back and visit. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it really out. did not touch, like, the downtown areas of no. Gatlinburg. It mm. did not touch the areas of Pigeon Forge that everybody knows. Exactly. It really affected some cabins and, and some displaced a lot of people oh. up in the mountains. A lot of locals. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And those people depend on people coming here and enjoying what's going on, like Robbie's Place and all of that stuff and our place. So come back, enjoy it. I mean that that yeah, is that's the key what too. That's it. what helps. And, and you know we've right, watched it steadily right. grow and come back. You're still getting a thousand people a day in your place. That's it, awesome. It, you know, man's naturally attracted to fire. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we talk about me <laughs> burning that, stuff in my mm-hmm. fire pit all the yeah, time. So. You need that on a shirt. <laughs> right. You do. You know. T-shirt idea, Robbie Bowman. You know, <laughs> one you, of those evolution T-shirts where it shows somebody you know with. With a little campfire up to you actually forging a knife nice. <laughs> right, right. in a forge. That'd be great. You know, one of our mottos are is come, come to Pigeon Forge and forge a memory. Oh, that's oh nice. yeah, that's great. Forge a memory while you're here. Well, that's the one thing that stands out for me is, you know, I, I'm from Knoxville. I was born and raised there. And so we came up as kids all the time. But I always remember the sign for Pigeon Forge is literally the blacksmith mm-hmm. hammering, right? Mm-hmm. That's awesome that you're right there at the old mill. With the traditional yeah. stuff of Pigeon Forge. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm in one of the last historical areas that's still here in Pigeon Forge. That's for sure. Right. With the Old Mill people and the Bensons. and uh, Well, I tell you, that Old Mill district has so much to offer, and they just keep adding on and adding on. Yep, and they're kind of concentrating back to the handmade stuff. They are, w- yep. which is great, I think. Right. right. It's made that area, you know, from the, from the pottery house to everything else. They've just made it. It has a really good feel down there and the foot traffic's amazing 
You know, the craftsman there is second to none. That's for sure. Yes. That's for sure. So the assistant is waving two at me. And I think that means we've got two minutes left. So we're going to take a little bit of, of a break. We want to remind you that we are brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. We thank Robbie Bowman for being here with us and talking to us. It's been, been a great show so far. We're going to come back with more. But remember, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring that bell for your notifications, and we'll be right back with more guys talking. And we're back with more Guys Talk Knives, more Robbie Bowman. We want to get rid of this guy over here because he just made me laugh before we came back. Just, Usually I'm dancing before the thing comes back on. I didn't you dance didn't this it. time. You were too embarrassed to do it in front of Robbie Bowman. That's what it was. No, like you said, it's too early. It is early. It is early. Robbie has to go open his shop today, so we got him exactly in really right. early oh, this yeah. thing today. So that, and let's get back into this because I think you, you have some really interesting things coming up, including something called Bubba Fest. I heard about this the other day. What is going on with Bubba Fest? Bubba Fest is a new event being uh -huh. held at the LeConte Center, and they've got people like, you know, Burt Reynolds, uh, Sons of the Anarchy. You got Kane, ex wrestler. Nice. That's awesome. You know, you got a lot of these TV stars coming all in one place. Right. For y'all to come and visit and, and maybe get the autograph and, you know, do business with. And uh, it's, it's going to be a really cool event. Yeah, I just heard about <laughs> it the other day. Fun, it yeah. sounds like it's going to be a ton of fun. And we'll try to find a bunch more information and throw it in the links to oh, this for sure. show. Yeah. But I heard $6 million man, right? Yeah. Lee Majors. Lee Majors is right. going to be here. <laughs> I used to love that show. I had a six million dollar man. I mean, come on. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to meet I remember, Lee Majors? I actually got to meet Kane, Glenn Jacobs, one time mm -hmm. at, when he owned that uh, fitness center on Chapman. Right. And I was in there for something else, and all of a sudden, like the light was eclipsed <laughs> behind me, and I turned around. I was like, Kane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he went, "Well, they call me Glenn around here." And yeah. it was just nice to me and shook my hand, and my hand disappeared when he shook my hand because he's a giant of a person. A giant of a man with a really nice heart. Oh, just oh, a yeah. good guy. Loves and people. smart. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh, he's smart. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's awesome. So, and also here you have some other stuff coming up, including your grudge match. Yeah, in September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, I'm having uh, Iron Mountain Metalcraft grudge matches. And these are that's all... Awesome. Forged in fire stars. I've got over 20 of them, up to 25, all coming for the fans. We're That's trying to great. give back to the fans. Nice. So how hard is it to get 25 forged in fire contestants to get down here? That's tough. I ain't doing it all by myself. <laughs> you know, I got people like Ray Kirk and Josh Weston uh -huh. and a few of them guys from the show all helping because we nice. want to build something from the show here in the Smoky Mountains. So what happens at a grudge match? What, what do you do? What is the event like? And, and can people get autographs and that kind of thing? Yes, we're going to be here for three days. All the Forest and Fire guys are going to have their own tents, and they're going to be demonstrating, making things. Wow. You can meet, greet, maybe wow. purchase one of their knives. And the grudge matches is like me and Ray Kirk get on a stage. Oh. We're going to go head to head <laughs> and making like a bottle opener or a blacksmithing knife nice. or something. And something we can make in less than 45 minutes. Oh, that's nice. crazy. And then we're going to hold it up, and whoever gets the most cheers right. wins the grudge match. Right. And then we give that product away to the crowd. So you need me that's in the awesome. audience up there giving the, the Robbie Bowman. Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. There we go. <clears throat> now, where is, it, awesome. where is the grudge, ma grudge match going to be held? It's going to be at my shop down in the old uh, Forge Plaza, 172 Old Mill Avenue. Very cool. That Iron Mountain awesome. Metal Craft. That's awesome. So, yeah, we're, we, I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to go there and, and do some some Facebook live I was from that. Just thinking the yeah, exact same be awesome. thing. Go to the Grudge Match and do some Facebook live, and they maybe even guys the talking knife from outside. That would be awesome. We have the technology now. <laughs> we do have the technology. <laughs> we made the show bigger and better. <laughs> We, we just increased everything to HD and got a new switcher so mm -hmm. that we can go on location places. And we've always laughed about just taking this out into the middle of a field for no reason and right. not tell anybody, just do it in the middle of a field. But taking it to the grudge match would be awesome. Yeah, we've got uh, stars coming from New York, Florida, even got one guy, Scott Thomas, who was Forged and Fire champion. Oh, yeah. Driving from California. Nice. To be here to meet driving him. from California. He's driving. He said, "Have forge, we'll travel." <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. It'll be a lot here, of fun. He was here last year, and he's coming back. He has so much fun. No, that's, that's, that's amazing. You, know, you can't beat it. It's a beautiful area, and it's, and especially getting to hang out with guys that. I mean, 
you all have to at this point know each other. Right. Yeah. So to you know to have that camaraderie back together has to be a lot of fun. Right. Exactly. Uh, you learn new techniques. You you meet great people trying different things. You know, it makes it exciting even sure. for the knife makers who've been doing it for 20, 30 oh, yeah. years. Oh yeah. Well, because you're all pushing each other to do better and yes. to beat the other guy, and that has to be on some level that has to take your art form to a completely different level. Yes. Right. I mean, how? So from your first time on Forge and Fire, how much did that alter how you work? You know, the first time, you know, I had a really rough time, but it it struck a new spark in me to push myself to the very limits on about everything I do. I want to, you know, that's do awesome. More, you never learn it all, right? I, never. That, what a what a neat result from that show that was huge anyway. Yes, but to let that you because you've been doing this forever. For that to, to push you to say, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to be. I'm going to make every single knife as good as it can possibly be. Exactly. You know, and you see all these new techniques and new mm-hmm. things people are trying, and That's you just so want to cool. better yourself and doing the same thing. No doubt. Always pushing the limits. Right. And I've seen some of your recent custom work. Oh, well, I mean, it's gorgeous. Well. It's gorgeous. And are those things for sale in your shop? Yes, in my shop. You know, I've got knives anywhere from twenty bucks, you know, to five hundred bucks. You know, they that's is awesome. a custom knife in my shop you can afford. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. No, that's always good. And that's hard to find sometimes. It is. You that know, custom knife that, that sits right there in the right price point for the person. Price point, and, and I encourage people to pick them up, put them in their hand. You're going to find that one knife that just nestles yep. in so your hand. Let's say that Jason and I showed up at your shop, and we wanted to have the experience of making something with you. What's that going to cost us? How long is it going to take? Are there variants of what we can do while we're there? Yes, I got several different things you can make while you're there. Mm-hmm. No matter what you pick, it's you'll be in and out in less than an hour. Okay, I can do up to four people at the same time, wow. like a railroad spike. You can uh-huh. make a knife out of a railroad spike. You, the customer, does all the hammering on a 2,000-degree steel. You, the customer, will nice. put the big twist in it. <laughs> then, at that point, we will take over, uh-huh. and we're going to show you how they're shaped sharpened and polished okay and you're in and out in less than an hour and a railroad spike knife it costs 75 dollars to make uh, that's awesome yeah <laughs> i mean for real that is awesome i think i know what i'm doing one week in the I summer i know right <laughs> yeah and we got knives even the little kids can make i've got a little 15 dollar knife you make out of a nail oh yeah or a little yeah, pony yeah. shoe knife uh-huh them little kids don't realize the excitement until they start it. They don't realize mm-hmm. they can do that. That's so right. Cool. No, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So what's the age limit wise as, as for kids? Do you, you, I'm sure you have a cutoff as far as. Yeah, three-year-old's about too small. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Four and five-year-old, I'll put a hammer in her hand and let them have nice. some fun. That's nice. No, that's awesome. That's, yeah. that's younger than I actually thought it would be, mm-hmm. right? I actually thought it would be, uh, I don't know, for some reason in my mind, I thought seven or eight would have to be the limit on that, but that's awesome. Anyone wanted though. a 21-year age limit on making knives. No, 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 that's not where it was. Um, let's see. I do have some questions that I want to ask. We're going to try this for the this first is, time, yeah, this Jason. Is, this is going to be something we'll do with all of our guests from now on. Uh, what, are we, what are we titling this? The this Fast is, Five? These are the Fast Five. These like, are the Fast Five. So I'm going to ask you five questions. I'm okay. going to ask them whatever comes to mind. We're going to get through them fast, and we're going to see what they, what, uh, what they are. So I have my questions here. All right. <clears throat> Best soap for seriously dirty hands. Because I know you've got them. As Lye soap. Lye soap. <laughs> Can you just that get... was not the answer I was expecting. <laughs> so you just use lye soap? I mean, is it borax? What, what are you using as lye soap? No, there's a man here in the Smoky Mountain who hand makes lye soap. I was about to and, say, you're getting the real stuff. Yeah, it's, it's made right here. Uh, and that's what we <laughs> So use. no lava, just the just just lye, just soap. lye just, soap. Yeah, just lye nice. soap. That's awesome. Nice. <laughs> Question two. Beaver or straw? Beaver. <laughs> I knew it was going to be beaver. <laughs> yes. And straw wears out. Here we go. Fixed or folding? Fixed. Most definitely. Thumb stud or flipper? Thumb. Why really? thumb stud? Really? Wow. Don't He's you old like, school. Yeah. You don't like the yeah, flipper action? Yeah, I like it. Thumb. You like the thumb stud? You yeah. don't like the flipper action? I don't action? like the flipper. See, I've noticed this about, and not to go off on a tangent here at all, but I've noticed that old school guys like Robbie here who's blacksmithing, he's making his own knives, he's doing the fixed stuff, they like that thumb stud better. Mm-hmm. I feel I, like I'm going to kill myself with it I every time I do it. I have finding one that I like where the thumb stud sits. But it's the same thing you talked about a few minutes ago of finding that knife that fits right in your hand. Find the one that nestles, yeah. yeah. Right? And we have one more question on the Fast Five, even though we slowed down right in the middle That's of all right. it. And this one comes from the assistant over there. Okay. Cake or pie? Pie. Pie. That's what, what of- I'm talking about. <laughs> now, if I bring you a pie, do I get a discount making a knife? 
No, we wouldn't enjoy eating it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. You yeah. would have people show up with pies the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, that's Make it a pumpkin pie. That's right. Pumpkin mm-hmm. pie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff right there. With with or without Cool Whip? Without. Oh, he likes to plain pumpkin. He's yeah. old school on everything. Mm-hmm. I, no, I'm Rob with him on that, though. A good school. pumpkin yeah. pie that's got just the right spice in it. Right. right. Doesn't need anything else. Nope. I'll take lemon meringue over any other pie any day of the oh, week. Key lime pie. That's good, too. Mm-hmm. Really, any pie. <laughs> it's all about the pie. Pie is better than cake. The Robbie Bowman episode. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you coming on, and I, and I wish you the very, 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 very best of luck with everything you continue to do. We hope to have you here for the Blade Sport uh, competition, and we also, I think we really want to get up there and go to that grudge match. No, no, for sure, yeah. No, we're yeah. doing that. Yeah, and I'm going to right. stalk Burt Reynolds it. Bubba Fest. Bubba Fest. <laughs> but no, I think it'd be really cool if we could get down and, and make something with you there yeah. at your location. Yeah. I think yeah. that's that's something that people want to do. Tell us again exactly where that is located on, on in Pigeon Forge. It's down in the Old Mill District at the Old Forge Plaza. Uh, give us a call. It's Iron Mountain Metalcraft. Okay. Give us a call uh, in advance to schedule okay. an appointment. Again, we, we stay real, real busy with people making things. Do you have a there. website? Yes. And do you know what that website URL is off the top of your head? IronMountainMetalCraft.com. Awesome. There we go. We will stick yeah. that in the notes and make sure that everybody sees it. Guys, this has been an episode of Guys Talk Knives. Remember, we're brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, SMKW.com, uh, the world's largest knife store, here with our special guest, Robbie Bowman. We appreciate him coming in and all of that. Make sure you are following us on Instagram, following us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, where we have 91,000 people in our community. 91,000 of the best followers in the world. Amazing followers. They're yeah. going to love Robbie when oh, this drops. No, no They're going to love yeah. it. They're going to have questions for him. And we'll pass those on. Make right. sure you're subscribing to our channel. Make sure you're ringing that bell so that you get all your notifications when they come up. I love that he goes like that. It's right there. <laughs> it's above my head. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to get out of here. This is Guys Talk Knives. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>